Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the Heckler by Rusty. Now this particular model was a nominee for the SEMA Surfboard of the Year Award in the alternative category. So when I saw the board and I saw it in the category, I phoned up the folks at, at Rusty and I said, I gotta get my hands on the Heckler to find out why would it be nominated. So when I went down there, this is what they gave me. They gave me a 5.3 by 20.12 wide by 2.16 thick, liters of volumes 26.7. Sit back and enjoy the show. So let's have a look at the outline on this board. It does have a more fish type outline. And so what that looks like is a wide point front from center. It's a great paddler. They've got lots of foam up here. It's got a beak of a nose. So you can really be up on it when you're paddling. And it'll also help you get down the line and get through some flat spots. But another thing I, I noticed is it has a relatively flat deck. And when they have a flat deck, what they're actually doing is they're taking the foam and they're carrying that flat all the way out. So you got maximum volume on the rails, but it doesn't feel like a real boxy rail. They tapered it down nice and they're hiding the volume real well. So at 5.3 at 26.7 liters, they did a good job. Let's have a look at the tail on this board. We've got a wing or a step right here and that's gonna act as a pivot point but it also is a place for them to pull the tail in. So if it wasn't for this, this wing, it would just be a super wide swallow. And what I like about that being pulled in a little bit is I feel like it gives the board the ability to be a little bit more high performance. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Most fish type boards like to be down the line fast and they're real kind of cruisy carvy. Well, I feel like this one will give you the option to jam it in the hook. Right, so I really felt like this board has had that kind of extra edge over a regular fish. So let's have a look at the concaves on this board. Like I put my glasses on for this one. So we've got, we've got a slight single, it starts to get a little bit bigger, and then about right here in the middle of the board, it starts this huge two half moon channels that the folks at Rusty call the Venturi effect. So let's look at it for a second. As I'm moving it down here, it just gets deeper and deeper. And as I come in between the fins here, it starts, you can see it's really heavy. And then the V out, the tail, we know that V is going to help us take a really wide board like this and transition from rail to rail really smoothly. And it felt smooth. It felt good rail to rail. But I want to talk about the Venturi effect. So the Venturi effect was in the early 1800s. And it was, they were taking a pipe and the pipe, let's say the circumference was that round, right? And they were putting water through the pipe, but then they would narrow the pipe down and make the hole smaller. And then they would open back up again. And as they brought the, the, the pipe to a narrow, it would create this thrust through that narrow area and then begin to rush through with some power. And that's the concept here. The concept is in right here is where they start to funnel the water and then they're starting to channel it out this way. And the deeper the channel, it creates more air, which is gonna give you more lift. And you, there is that low pressure right there and you can feel the speed. Now, I don't know that we can say it's the Venturi effect because this isn't a pipe, it's a surfboard. But I did notice a lot of speed and I did feel like I had some good control, especially from rail to rail. And I think that right there, is worthy of a nominee for something special about a surfboard because that I, I think that that's what took this board from a straight fish into something that could be a little bit more high performance. So now let's talk about the fins I chose. I chose the Mick Fanning because it has a good amount of rake and it has the wide base and I wanted a large fin especially in such a wide board. But I felt like I was limited on the fins I could use with this board because it was so short. At 5.3, the board's already super responsive. And if I get too carried away with, you know, maybe a twin fin setup with a small trailer, it's going to get looser. Look, I tried it as a quad and it just felt like I had less control. I felt like I needed to have that center fin to pivot off of. And that, that, that allowed me to drive through my turns and in my roundhouses and it felt good. And I could also pivot around and jam it in the pocket. 
So the folks at Rusty sent this board down. Look, this is not the stock dims. This is a 5.3. I gave them my leaders. This is what I picked up. And if I had it my way to do it custom, I'd go 5.6, 5.7. I'd narrow it down to like 19 and a quarter. And I, by, by stretching it out, that would give me some option with different fin setups. I feel like I can get a little bit more progressive and really try and um, do a little more high performance surfing out of it. But for the most part, this was a super fun board. So thanks Rusty for sending the board down. Hey, look, if you guys like the show, subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram under Surf and Show. Well, that's it for today. Take care. Bye-bye. Shake things up and not come down